Okay, we are back with uh, District 3 candidate Millie Bailey. And, you know, let's just get into it and let's just get to the meat and potatoes of everything here. Right. So uh, I just want your take as a candidate on some of the other candidates. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody wants to be friendly and uh, fun and everything like that. You know, politics is dirty. It is it is brutal. And you're going to find that out as you go through this uh, (laughs) this thing. So my question to you is this. District three, Mm -hmm. who are you voting for? Myself. And why? Because I am the best candidate for District three. I have initiatives and new perspectives and new ideas that will make Moreno Valley District three thrive and the residents happy because I care about the residents. Okay. Um, For mayor, who are you going for? You've got uh, Carrie Thin, you've got George Price, you've got the Pedans, Mm -hmm. you've got um, so-called Molina, we don't know if he's on and off, uh, Gutierrez, and uh, maybe myself. I might jump into that mayor race. I'm not sure exactly yet. I'm just kind of going to feel everything out. Uh, But that's who who we know so far. So what about mayor? What do you think? I'm thinking Carrie Thin. And why? Because... I read a lot about her, and I went on her website, and she really has good initiatives and ideas to help the whole city, not just dish, one district. Okay. She cares about people in this in this area in this city. Okay, um, have you been listening to my thing about 360 degrees of association? Yes. Okay, are you aware that uh, Carrie Thin and Ladonna Jimson are? Um, was endorsed by LaDonna Jimson. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that, that they're best buddies and stuff, but I'm just saying in the prior uh, situation, she was endorsed by LaDonna Jimson when she ran for RCC school district board. Mm-hmm. So that's something I just, a lot of people aren't aware of that. That's, mm-hmm. And that's what the 360 degrees of association is. Do your homework. The, a lot of these people are connected. Now, I like Carrie Thin as well. She's a veteran, a lot of background for her. I do a lot of, uh, I mean, I like her a lot too, but I have to be fair and let everybody know. A lot of these people, there's a lot of association here. Thank you, because I didn't. I was not aware. Of Do the, your homework of on that. Do her you know? connection to yeah. Ladonna. You, uh, you know, and, I, and the only reason I'm bringing that connection to Ladonna is because of the revelations that have come out recently. Yeah. Now, in the third, in the new first district, who, who you got? You got Victoria Vaca and you got Ladonna Jimson. Who are you going for? Oh. <laughs> That's yeah. a tough one. Huh? Yeah. You, you got worse and worse, sir. Man. Two evils. Which one do you go with? Right, right. Now, wait, wait. Now, why do you say two evils? Because uh, according to everybody, LaDonna is such a sweet... And she is a, a nice lady, but... Yeah, I've, met, I've talked to LaDonna. Very yeah. cordial, but... And she's been reaching out to you recently. Isn't it funny during election yes, season? it is hilarious to uh, me. Uh, uh, up until that time, she didn't want nothing to do with you. No, Has I she been reaching out to you? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Why, what is she doing? She wants to help do my event. She wants mm-hmm. to help come... All of a sudden, now she wants to get involved with the animal shelter yeah, and... You know? I don't want to be involved with her. Wow, what a politician. What a politician. So who, so who are you going for in, in, in that election? Because you know Victoria Vaca, really even though she's... Do you vote? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't vote, you're also creating a problem. a problem. Because if you don't vote, that's one less vote. Victoria Baca doesn't have to... It's not even a factor against her. So I need to vote for her. You need to vote. If you, if you can vote in that. But we, but we know in your situation, you, you can't vote I for I can her. only vote for my district. Right. That's right. That's correct. But if I could, if I could. would definitely... Have to go with LaDonna again. I w- if there's nobody else jumping in that race. I don't know. I think I might I might I be would, on the fringes of that to give people a little option. But I, would, I wish somebody come in and jump in because I don't think I want Donna or Baca mm, <laughs> back in okay. that seat. Okay, great. I, I heard of a man named... Donovan, but um, hey, hey, yeah. I don't know if he's gonna run. For you know what? Or... I do not like that guy. He's Me he's either. aggressive. Oh, really? He, on the mic. I mean, he's got great mic skills. You ever seen him? Heard him rap? I mean, he's awesome. He, he's he can very rock a party. Knowledgeable. So that's very why very knowledgeable. He's been around, but unfortunately, honest people cannot be elected Aww. because it, I mean. Look we, at gotta, La- we can change that. Oh, we can change that, but look look at Ladonna. We 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 thought that was you know I would have never thought she was a bank robber. <laughs> you know, but she's a bank robber. And people say, well, no, she and embe- You know what? Apples and oranges. To me, that's bank robbery. If you, it's an inside job, you're a bank robber. By definition, to me, you're a bank robber. So please, everybody, stop telling me how I should think. I, if I say you're a bank robber, by definition, you're a bank robber. That's and, it. And what do you think about everyone saying that that's the past, that we can't justify the past? How do you feel about that? Um, well... Here's how I feel about that. And I like the way you, you tried to turn this interview in on me. <laughs> Good job. Um, well, I do think you, the past does matter. Okay. 
So if, and it depends on what kind of crime it is. So if I embezzled money or if I was a bank robber, would you want me to be in charge of your funds, your public funds? Definitely. Exactly. So it does matter. And then, in my opinion, what about the people who didn't do anything wrong? You know, they, they never did anything wrong. So uh, in that recall election, you had a guy who served the country. Mm-hmm. He's an original resident. Doesn't have any uh, skeletons in any his skeletons in his closet in the civilian world because most of his time was in the military. I'm not saying he was a perfect guy, <laughs> knowing what I know, but you know, you'll never get those records. Uh, the fact of the matter is, w- w- what about that guy? You know, he was disenfranchised, and nobody talks about that. The fact of the matter is, if that was known, I don't believe she she would have won election, and no. that Donovan Sadiq guy would have won. Yes. Uh, the election. Even the Baca people are saying that as well. They're saying, hey, by default, he would have won. And we've seen what he's been doing for the last two years. And like I said, I really hate that guy because he gets public documents and he, you know, he's a friend. Proof. Yeah, he's friends with MV Gordy and all these other people. And, you know, he's digging up stuff on the Bacas. Uh, July 15th, 8 a.m., if you're interested, Victoria Baca, Committee M, embezzlement case. It's for a case that doesn't exist. I just given you where it's going to be. Ellen, you said that's July 15th at 8 a.m.? 8 a.m. At the courthouse? At the courthouse in Riverside. In Riverside. So you can always go down there. Because like I said, if I'm a liar, I'm a liar. So Everybody has to do their research. That's right. Do your research. I definitely want to go see that. So um, in the time that you've been here, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff going on. My cat is going crazy. I don't know what she's she's doing. But... um, in your district specifically, you've done a lot in the community. What else have you been doing in the community besides um, your nonprofit? And um, you know, I saw you in the Edgemont Community Cleanup again. Uh, what 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 other things are you know? Do you have planned in case you don't win election? Are you going to just disappear and drop off the face of the earth and then show up in four years? Or are you going to continue to? I'm going to continue to make it make a change in my community because these nonprofits are going to help. Even if I don't win, I'm going to take these nonprofits and make them even bigger. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure every resident is happy and taken care of and safe. That's my primary concern. Can you work with Brian Lowell if he gets elected? I can, I can definitely work with Brian Lowell. There's no animosity towards me and any of the council members or anyone running. Any okay, well, I, I want to I warn you. I've worked with LaDonna for two years, uh-huh. and I did not know I was work, ro- working with a bank robber. If I had known that, I would not be working with her. I mean, I'm serious. You know, I, I don't mean to, like, uh, hammer her with that, but if I had known that, you know, I don't associate with drug dealers. I don't associate with, you know, I mean, that's just my people. personal preference. Yes. You know, and if I had known that, I would not have... Uh, unfortunately, I'm serious. I just wouldn't have uh, did that. And like I said, I am still floored because for two years, this woman looked me in my face knowing she stole that election. And now uh, Victoria Baca, because I'm not a hypocritical person, I asked for her to, to resign. Mm-hmm. Of course, she, she refuses she to do so. Refuses. And now, I mean, she's being protested. I mean, isn't it funny how LaDonna Jimson now has turned into Victoria Baca? Let me ask you this. What is it about... That, that seat. That 360. Yeah, that 360 association. But what is it about that seat where people, they just feel that I know better than you? Is If you win the seat, is that, is that, is that going to happen to you? No, I feel like that is a district thing right now. Since the district that you're in, well, since the new mm-hmm. district, in, district 1, they feel like the people in District 1 are less than them. That's why we need somebody who's a resident who will treat them like people and not like servants and actually care what they want to say. When I get elected for District 3, it's not my decisions. It's the people's decisions. I represent the people. So I get their input, and then I'll make a decision for them. They'll help me make that decision. I don't want anything that is just me. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you think? Let me, inter- let me interject here without choking uh, now, I believe that there's uh, usually a cause and effect for everything. Mm-hmm. Now, the question is, how come, uh, or why is it, I should say, that people who get the seat in the 5th District um, within the last what, 16 plus years right. have been uh, self-serving, self-serving their own interests or the interests of the developer, the notorious developer. Mm-hmm. Now, would you say um, they're allowed to do that because maybe the people are apathetic, meaning that the people just don't care, um, they're asleep? They're not awake to what's going on. They just kind of let things happen. Do you believe? Uh, so I guess the question I'm asking is, do you believe that the residents also play a part in why 
corrupted individuals are taking those seats. I definitely agree with that. The residents are informed. We're not doing our homework. We're not doing our research. So we're going by what this propaganda is told to us. And we need to actually do our own research, our own homework. Because knowledge is key. And let me follow up with that. So what would be uh, your solution as far as waking the residents up? Like to getting them to take more of an interest other than just receiving lip service. Watch what, the hot seat. No, I'm joking, joking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But what would what would you suggest that they do to be more informed and say, you know what, uh, candidate A, B, C, and D, that sounds wonderful. However, let me go do this to find out that you're saying is credible or true. What would you suggest that they do? I think they need to do more community outreach. We need more community. Well, now when you say they, who do you mean they? The district. Actually, well, okay. So again, we're speaking of the residents. What do you suggest? What would you suggest the residents do to become more aware, and more awake of the decisions and the people who will ultimately affect their lives and their livelihood? What would you suggest they do to get them activated? We need to get them into these meetings. We need to show them what's going on. Let them know what's going on. I mean, how do you suggest getting them into the meeting? Making sure we inform them about the meetings. A lot of people don't even know when the meetings are. Well, let me ask this too, and I'm not trying to grow you, but I'm just trying to, um, for the listeners, I'm trying because I'm trying to get an understanding myself. I don't have the, all the answers, but people don't want to go to meetings nowadays. Well, how would you get them to go to a meeting? Since you can't, if, if you can't make it to the meeting, we have Channel Three. It's our M, it's our Marina Valley. Empire's on that night. I don't want to watch. <laughs> well, that's perfect because we do double replays. We replay the same. Uh, agendas and meetings so anytime you want to turn to channel 3 they will repeat the meeting I want to make sure that the, the residents of, that, of, of district 1 or 5 are aware and I want to get them activated because they're not activated that's why their mattresses in the alleys and things like that it's the residents who start first we need to care and activate ourselves first one last thing you touched upon community outreach um, not that I want to tell you what to do as a candidate, but I think that is an awesome thing is to actually get out there and commu- and reach those people and say and, and, and get them to uh, inculcate them to them, which means uh, have to permeate or soak into their being why it's important to be uh, aware of who is taking that seat yeah. more aware. So you got to get out there in the community. I'm not telling you what to do, but that's why to get out in the community and actually have you know, conversations with people. Yes, that's definitely what needs to happen. In my district, I'm definitely doing that and getting and myself involved and letting them know who I am. I want, I want District 1 to thrive, so I want a good representative. I wish that we had another candidate in there besides the two bad ones. But if we get another third one in there mm-hmm. with a great man or, or, you or say woman. Bad. What yes. makes them bad? Kind of corrupt. Well, I wouldn't say bad. I would just say well, they for the sake of time and not going down a rabbit hole, I just okay. thought I'd give you a hard time when you say bad. But I'll go ahead and let Donovan take back over. Well, as somebody from Edgemont, it's the fact of the matter is it's we're apathetic here because look at Edgemont compared to the rest of the city. Yes. And this has been going on for thirty years. And every time there's a project or there's money allocated, what happens to that money? They take it, it from, they Edgemont. Take it from Edgemont for the benefit of everybody else in the city. And that's we need more residents from Edgemont to come to these meetings and let them know. Well, yeah, that's not going to happen. But, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that some that do come, they do come. But, again, we're one of the older neighborhoods. It's just not going to happen. But now, you know, that I'm here and I got this show, I, I'll do the best that I can to, to do that. To activate them because they're so right. used, to, like you said, for 16 years. It's been the same. Exactly. They're used. They're content with what this this. It's it's an enigma. It's there, and, and I don't like the contentness. We have to get uncontent with what the bad things are going on. We have to make a change. Huh? Contentness is, and comfortability is not good mm-hmm. unless it is in the right situation. And right now, you guys, it's it's like poverty. It's a whole different country in that spot. And then you go up the street, and you got to stay. Yeah, city. it's all a, a it's awesome crazy. city. But uh, again, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Definitely. It has been great having you here. We wish you so much luck. Thank we you. still got to get you uh, for the video show. Yes. You know, and make sure you send us all your, your stuff so we can get your background and stuff and all the special effects in there. Okay. But again, uh, thank you for coming on the Hot Seat Roadshow. I am Donovan Sadiq. Please write your representative about that animal shelter because we're killing them at a clipping rate. Please. Better than a Uzi. Oh. So uh, that's what we got. And we want you guys just to take care.